West Ham versus Sheffield United at London Stadium. Um, let's be honest, no disrespect to them at all, but a great opportunity for West Ham to get three points. It's what we need. We've had, we're coming off the back of two league uh, losses on the spin. No real shame in it. I mean, Man City and the Liverpool away, are, they're not games you look at in the calendar and think, yeah, we're going to get some points in those games. But you don't want to start getting that feeling that we're losing our momentum. And this is a big opportunity and, and the perfect game for us, really, playing a team at the bottom of the league, you know, one point from the opening six games. And with us, you know, in the top seven, and this result could, if we you know, if we do go and get a result, of course, um, could get us back into the top six. And it's a good opportunity. There's no two ways about it. And I think it's something we uh, we need to grab hold of, West Ham. We can't let these little games slip by. And I'm certainly going into this game with our towels up, I believe. Or I certainly am. I do think that we've got a you know good, good chance in this one. So um, before we go into talking about West Ham, let's talk about Sheffield United. Um Strange um, for them, really, because they've come up and, uh, and you know, great season for them last season in the Championship. Did very well. Uh, Paul Hickenbottom's done a, a really good job at Sheffield United, you've got to say, um, and, got, and got them up. But they, there's a feeling about them and uh, also Luton Town this season that you just feel like they're going to go down already. I, I just... I can't see anything else other than relegation for uh, Sheffield United. And that's not me being nasty towards them. I don't want, you know, to think that we've got the whole Tevez thing. I'm trying to point the finger at them in any way. I'm not. I just, I just think, I think Sheffield United fans would probably admit that, that it's just a feeling like they're kind of accepting that they're not going to have enough this season in a way. Um, and it's like they're preparing for the championship again next season, which no doubt they'd be, they'd come down stronger because if you look at their side, I see a championship side. I don't see a side that's trying desperately to stay in the Premier League. I just, I just don't. Um, and I, I, Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh there, but that's how I, I'm seeing it at the moment. And it's a weird season this year because you consider last one when we were in that relegation scrap, let's be honest, all season. But it was like for the vast majority of the campaign, which I would say 75% of it, so the three-quarter mark, maybe even slightly more, there was about nine teams that could get relegated. It was so tight. From that was from uh, like the bottom of the league right up to say you know eleventh, twelfth place. There were teams that could get relegated and were in the, the, worried, looking over their shoulders and thinking this could happen. Us massively included in that. Whereas this season, you know, it's almost like two spaces are taken. Uh, weirdly, you know, and but I, mean, I do bear in mind what I said last season, though. However, because I did say um, midway through the Bournemouth were gone. I've Southampton and Bournemouth, they'll be the ones I'm pretty sure they will they will go. They're going to really struggle. And then obviously Bournemouth got out of it. So I'm not going to completely write off these teams and say that's it. But I don't know. You look at their sides and they just don't seem to be enough. It, I, I don't think they've got the ability, the quality in that side to, to get out of it. I think it, it, to get, you know, they're going to have to, rec- they're relying on other teams to be worse than them. And I don't see it. I just don't see enough sides in that mix that will keep them up. I just don't, at the moment, I do not see it. It's going to have to be a miraculous turnaround for both Luton and uh, Sheffield United. Um, but Paul Hickingbottom, I actually do feel for him, actually. Great season, um, as I said last year, with, with getting him into the Championship. And then typically, isn't it, you know, you, you get into the Premier League, it's far superior league. We know that. Very, very tough. Very unforgiving. And already it's like, oh, his job's on the line. And you do feel for these managers, you really do. Um, I wish sometimes these clubs would just come out and just say, "Look, he's staying for the season." Um, it's, especially if they're if, if they're in that mindset of thinking, really, we're preparing for the next season. I don't know, or maybe they're not. Maybe their owners are thinking, "No, we've got enough to stay in the Premier League." Maybe they are thinking that, but I mean, I think that's blind, really. I think that's a little bit, um, you know, far. You know, I think they're not really realistically looking at that correctly you know you look at their side and you think no that, that is just not a Premier League side in my opinion and um, I do I do feel for them I do feel for the manager um, and obviously of course coming off an 8-0 drubbing at home to Newcastle last week I mean that was an absolute horrendous scoreline um, seeing I watched the highlights of the game I didn't watch it live I watched the highlights of it I was expecting to see an absolutely horrendous Sheffield United performance thinking oh my god he actually wasn't that bad. I know it sounds ridiculous. They actually they played all right. They actually got stuck in. They just Newcastle were just scoring every every opportunity. That was what happened. It was just one of them. It was a really weird game. We'll talk about it a little bit more in Sheffield United at the moment in terms of their defending because that that is a big problem. I mean, you can't concede eight goals at home. I mean, especially when you're playing okay, it's very concerning for them. Um, I mean, obviously not for West Ham. We're going into this this weekend. It's something we have got to exploit. I think um, you'd imagine though a drubbing like that will get them. 
stronger mindset going there, thinking that we just cannot, you know, concede goals as easy as that. And I anticipate that's what we're going to see at London Stadium. They're going to have to shut up shop and be very, very tight. But, you know, we'll, we'll come to that a bit more. Um, you know, if you look at those, the, the goals they conceded, it was a set pieces. You know what I mean? It was the set pieces. They're just so poor at defending. I don't know why. I can't quite understand why they are struggling so much at that. But they really are weak when it comes to set pieces. Like, they're just so disorganised and... And, you know, you, when you look at West Ham and how good we are at set pieces, notoriously we've been good set pieces for quite a few years under David Moyes. It's something we've been good at. I know we, we sort of lost it a little bit, but we seem to really recapture it. And when you've got, especially got the likes of Jared, um, uh, with James Wall Prowse, sorry, um, of his deliveries, his corners, his free kicks, etc. I mean, this is a, a game that we really should be relishing and, and, and can punish them. Um, it's certainly something I think we've got to be focused on. Because I'm telling you, watching those highlights, my word, they're, they're defending at set pieces is woeful. Um, certainly for that game, anyway. Um, as I say, um, I do, I do, I, I don't have much hope for them uh, in, in the Premier League this season. And maybe they'll change. Maybe you know, by, by the time Christmas, will, will, you know, whips around, they're, they're putting some good performances. You start thinking, hang on, they've got something about them. But you know, one point from six games, it kind of tells you where they are um, at the moment. I do do feel for them, and I think uh, I think they're going to be coming to this quite a wounded animal. Where, where, whether that's a bad thing or not for West Ham, it's hard to say, isn't it? I mean. If it was a, a Man United or whatever, some team like that, you know, or Ch- you know, even like a Chelsea, even if they come back and got hammering, you think, oh, they're going to really want to get a result back here. But when it's Sheffield United, I, I don't know whether we've got the same, that same fear. I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to be in a position that we can exploit, i.e. if we can get an early goal, will it rattle them? Will it just make them think, oh, God, not again? You know, that, that's, that's what we're going to try and get uh, out of this game, in my opinion, get an early goal. I think that could really set the tone there, but... Let's wait and see. Um, they've got a bit of team news for them. We've got Ollie McBurney uh, is returning uh, to the lineup. I think, I think he's been out with injury uh, and and Har- Harmer is it? Um, who's been suspended? No, no, sorry, he was injured. Um, Harmer he came off the last game, but he's actually fit. So they, they've got a relatively strong side for this game in terms of what they've got available. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I don't look at this t- uh, Sheffield United team and fear it. I'll be honest. Um, and that's not me being, I said, I'm really, if the Sheffield United fans watching, I get it, it's not very nice what I'm saying, but I'm just trying to be completely honest. I just don't see enough. I, don't, I really don't. I don't see enough in that side that makes me worry. But, you know, I, I could be eating my words, you know, come Sunday and they come and get a result. You never know, do you, in the Premier League? You never know in football. It's, it's, it's a funny old game. And I, I certainly don't want West Ham, and I'm certain, sure we won't go into this game you know, with a cocky attitude, thinking we're going to stroll it, because you can't do that, especially in the Premier League. I mean, they're still a good side. They've just got promoted into the league. And they're there for a reason, but I'm talking more about the longevity of the season, you know, the 38 game mark. You just think, are they going to, are they going to accumulate 40 points? Well, they've only got one from six. So that's, that's, that's tough, isn't it? That's, that's a lot to ask. So, but you know, as I say, you never know with football. Uh, on to West Ham. Um, really strange season this and it's so far and I'm, and I'm gonna bloody jinx it like i've jinxed it with the result uh, you know Sheffield and i now definitely gonna win um and, and it'll be from a set piece i'm sure uh i do think that um west ham are, are having a bit of a strange season in that in terms of the injury situation we just seem to be okay i mean the only injury we've got at the moment is uh aaron creswell um which is a, a, a minor as well i don't think it's anything serious uh, we obviously came off uh, in the game uh, midweek in, in uh, Europe, so it was it was uh, as, you know Emerson's going to be our first, uh, first shot left back anyway, so it's, I don't think it's a big blow. But what I'm saying is David Moyes literally has every player available apart from Creswell, which is quite amazing, really, and it, it actually makes the team selection quite interesting, actually, and quite difficult. And there is a couple of big things in the team selection I'm going to talk about, um, but and I'm going to sort of meant touch on this a little bit now. Actually, it's regarding our uh, defending. It's not been good enough, actually, this season. I don't think it's been great. We haven't conceded... Well, sorry, we haven't kept a clean sheet in the Premier League all season. You know, six games in, that's quite concerning, in my opinion. Considering if, if you look at the, the defenders we have, you know, our two main centre-backs are Gerd and Zuma. I just think, at the moment, there's a big question marks over now for Gerd. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying in terms of his ability... I've, I mean, I've, I've, I heard people talking about getting him set, selling him and all this. I, I don't think that's ridiculous. I don't think, you know, he's a good defender. He just seems to be lacking confidence at the moment. He just seems to have a mistake in him. And I actually, I don't know, to be fair, I actually do, I do get why people are saying regarding possibly letting him go because he's kind of had that since he's joined. Do you know what I mean? He's always had this kind of risk element to him. He just seems to have something about him. I mean, even down to his injury, if you, know, if you go back to his injury, which was when he first joined the club last season, in the pre-season, 
he got injured against Rangers because he, he made a mistake and had to try and make up for it. He just seems like he's got a mistake in him all the time. He does like, you know, 80, 80 90% of his game is absolutely spot on, absolutely sublime and great tackles and really good. And then all of a sudden he just does something. And, you know, you go back to Liverpool, gave away a penalty and he just seems like a bit of a liability at the moment. And it's, it's, it's a shame. I don't want to be saying that about a player that, to be honest, I really admire. Like, I look at him and think he's, he's obviously got a lot of ability. I just, I wonder if it's more psychological with um, a Gerd at the moment, whether he just needs that break and to be taken out the spotlight a little bit, the pressure's off, but we'll come to that in a minute. But yeah, it's certainly a, a, a it's got to be something that David Moyes is considering um, and sorting out because we are now, you know, as I say, we're going game seven now and we still haven't kept a clean sheet. And you consider the ability we've got in that side. We shouldn't be conceding every game, um, especially against the teams we've been playing against. You know, Bournemouth, things like that. I just I look at some, some of these teams and think, come on, we've got to keep clean sheets. It's important. But we did get one in midweek against Lincoln. And that's something to build on. Uh, it's something to build on, something to give you a little bit of optimism. But yeah, but, but we'll, t- we'll talk about this in a, in a, in a bit. Um, as I've touched on already, I think the key part of this game for West Ham is going to be set pieces. That is actually uh, one of the key reasons when I come to my team is what that leans towards. I, uh, watching that um, uh, Sheffield United-Newcastle game, it really was alarming. If you haven't seen it, it'll, it'll be available somewhere, probably BBC or something. You can go and check the highlights out. It's worth watching just to see how bad they are uh, defending set pieces. It's quite alarming, actually. If I was a Sheffield United fan or whatever, I'd be thinking, what, what on earth is going on? So, uh, and, I, and, I, and I was there, if I was there, I'd be worried. If you've got James Ward-Prowse, you've got the players that we've got available, you know, we can exploit that. And that's certainly what I think we should be doing. Um so yeah, it's um, but the, what bit, the fact they're coming off an eight 0 though, and the fact that they'll be very mindful of not wanting to that to repeat, they do not want to be conceding goals. I get the feeling that we're going to see a team putting you know ten men behind the ball. I really do. I, I think they're just going to be sitting back and defending and trying to break counter attack, which I've uh, and that's that can prove difficult for West Ham. We 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 prefer teams to open up so we can we can pick them out ourselves because that, that our game plan really isn't it is um is counter-attack football. So that's what we're best at. So you do think that we're going to have to be very good uh, in other ways of uh, trying to break them down. And I dare I say, I know I keep repeating myself, but I think the set-piece route is the way to go with this. Um, right, on to my team then. This is going to be, um, as I say, a bit controversial, a couple of these uh, changes I've made. So Ariola in goal, absolutely. I think he's been brilliant. I've got to say, Fabian's been brilliant as well this season. It's great to have two goalkeepers that are doing well. Ariola, I still, I'm not, I'm not, you know, there's still a little bit of something about him, but I, I you know, it's shot, shot stopping's brilliant, and I'm still pleased with him overall. So, absolutely, he stays in the team. Uh, Vladimir Sufal at right back, definitely, he that's his spot at the moment. It, it's you know, it, it could well be Kira's again at some stage if an injury happens and he then comes in, does a good job. It's just the way football is, isn't it? Once a player's got that well, that position, they're playing well, you can't drop them, it's just too you can't do it, and you don't want to disrupt the back line, you don't keep disrupting things and changing, chopping and changing, you want to keep it consistent. So for me, Sue Fowl. Now, I'm going to contradict myself now because I'm making a change uh, in, the, in the middle and I think you're going to know who this is. So, uh, of course, I'm keeping Zuma. I'm keeping him at the right side of uh, the centre-back position. Um, I'm having Mavropanos come in. Um, I haven't seen him on the left side yet in terms of uh, being a centre-back, but I've had enough of a go at the moment. I, I just think he's he needs a break. He needs to be taken out of the game, out of the spotlight a little bit. We, we've done this before. I, 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 as I, I haven't prepped this well enough in terms of um, who I would compare with this for, but as I'm just sort of talking, I'm thinking about it, I, I, where we've dropped players before that have just underperformed. They've come back stronger. I, I do think sometimes you need that, just a bit of a break and and then just say, look, you know, it, it might make him have a little bit of a think and and realise that you, you've got to be fully focused because I, I, I don't know what it is with a good. I don't know whether it is it down to concentration, is it down to confidence? I, I just don't know. But it does feel like this is a repetitive thing now all the time that there's an error. And it's a, and let's be honest, in the Premier League, errors are very costly. Now, the reason I'm also making this change is because, like I've just said, I think Sheffield United are going to be defending vast majority of this game. I cannot see them coming all out attack against West Ham. I just I just don't I can't see it. That's my gut feeling in this. So with that in mind, it's probably a good opportunity to to test uh, Zuma and Mavropanos in that kind of dynamic because obviously they're gonna have to do some work during the game. But then you you're not up against an Arsenal, you're not up against a city, you're not up against a side that are going to be very dominant and, and you take and you take a bit of a gamble in terms of Mavropanos. Is he going to be okay in that position? I I think this would probably be the perfect game for it. So 
for me, Zuma and Mavropanos, though, I want to see it. And also, I'm really impressed with Mavropanos. He's a good player. He's, you know, he's a good experienced player. Did very well in Bundesliga. I, I've spoken to a couple of Arsenal fans who love him and when they were there and got him when he left. So, yeah, I'm, I'm well pleased we've got him. So, I, I, I want to see him play. I think he deserves it. And as I say, I think it'll do a good, the world of good, actually, to be dropped. And I know, I know it might come across a little bit, well, will it will it hurt him? But I, I think sometimes just take the pressure off him a little bit. Just say, look, you, you know, you've had a few errors. This just, this regroup. I'm not saying you've dropped, you're completely dropped, but just give you a bit of time to readjust, go back to training and, and, and calm yourself down and then get back to where you were. So, yeah, that's the change for me. Uh, Emerson, obviously, at left back. I mean, my word, what a player he's becoming for West Ham. I, I can't believe I actually doubted him. Now I feel really stupid for it. I, I remember saying uh, when he first came in, why are we bothered? You know, we, have, we had um, Mazuaku. Is this much better? I'm not convinced. Oh, I mean, he's... He solidified himself as a, one of our main players. It's such a vital cog in our side and really pleased for him. Really, really pleased. He's come to West Ham from Chelsea and done really well. And and he seems happy as well, settled. You know, you get some really well with Paqueta, I think it helps as well. So now I'm well pleased for him. Emerson definitely left back. So midfield, this is where now we've got to be mindful of the fact that we want to uh, attack uh, Sheffield United via set pieces. So I've gone for uh, Edson Alvarez, of course, uh, James Ward Prowse. Again, these are just the problem is with West Ham. Well, this isn't a problem. We've got these players now that are doing so well and so important for West Ham. They can't, you can't drop them. Do you know what I mean? You can't say, well, I'll tell you what this week, I'll tell you, we'll take Ward Prowse out. Oh, you can't. You can't take it Alvarez out. He's too important. Um, and I've gone for Paqueta on the left wing uh, because he will play a roaming role anyway. The way Paquetta plays, he's he, you know he's, he will just roam and he'll do what he wants to do and he'll dictate play and there'll be some crossovers here and there in, in terms of Antonio. So my midfield actually is Alvarez, uh, Ward Prowse and Thomas Suchek. I, I'm actually putting Kudus on the bench, even though I really want to see him play and I've, I'm so excited with him. I just think, as I say, this game, I think I can see them defending. I can see us having a lot of the ball. I think they're hard to break down. I think we're just going to need bodies and getting headers in and corners. I think that's where we're going to win this game. So... With that in mind, I don't know if that's going to suit Kudus, really. That's my feeling. So I would start Thomas Suchek. And I've got to be honest, so Thomas Suchek has been bloody brilliant this season. I can't believe I'm saying that. He had such a poor season last season. And there are reasons for that we'll, we'll go into another time. But I think for now, he's doing really well. It's great to see the old Thomas back, isn't it? And yeah, I absolutely think he, sh he deserves to be playing. I think he can cause some problems. I really do. And uh, obviously coming off the back of a goal in midweek as well. Um, so my front three are uh, Bowen on the right, as I've said, Paquetta on the left with a, with a you know freedom to roam a little bit, come inside and do whatever. Uh, and Mikel Antonio up front. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a fair team, isn't it? I'd like to know yours. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, before I give my score prediction... This uh, video is sponsored by Circle, Five Match Millions. Now, uh, the reason I'm mentioning this now, usually I'll put up an advert, but the reason I mention now is because if you do this now, if you sign up to it today and use the code West Ham Way, you enter for free, you can win a million quid. I've won three times, not, not, not a million quid, but I've won a few quid. And I've got to be honest, it's really fun. It's And it's just addictive. It's great. Two pound to play anyway, normally, but uh, you can play for free this weekend. Pick five games of the Premier League weekend. Give it a go. It's free to enter. Um, I'll, I'll put the link in the below this um, in this video. So look at the description. Just go below and uh, yeah, click on the link and use West Ham Way. Um, prediction then. I mean, I, I don't want to sound cocky of these bloody things. You know, I hate I hate doing that. But I'm going to say three 0 I, I just got a feeling we're going to beat them. I, I'm going into this game quite confident, which usually means it doesn't happen, but. I'm going with three 0 I really am. I'll just I'm looking forward to this one. And I'll tell you where I'll be. If you're not if, if you're not going to it or you haven't got a ticket yet, the West Ham way, we're hosting a pre-match event, the first one at the Colour Factory, right by the ground, um, right by Hackney Wick as well. That's all that ran that way by the stadium. And I'll be there with Dave and X and Ian Bishop as the guest. So uh, I'll also add the link in the below as well. If you haven't got a ticket, you can go and, go and purchase one. And if you're a patron, you get a discount on it as well. So uh look. I'm looking forward to this one. I really am. A uh, chance for us to get three points, get in that top six and carry on this very positive season so far. Come on, you irons.